But anyway, welcome. And uh, today, right, I'm just going to make a comment as we start. <coughs> uh, as predicted, the Labour Party attacked the First Minister, I think the word is attack, on the NHS. Um, I'm quite happy to go on the record as saying I reckon that the Labour Party, not only at First Minister's questions, but in their press releases, everything they do between now and the May general election will be about the NHS in Scotland. And what they'll be trying to do is destroy the credibility of the, of the, this, the SNP government in running the NHS. Because part of their the success of the uh, SNP in the polls has been their credibility as good governors, so that's some predicting that. Nori, what do you think about today's FMQs? Well, just to follow on from your comment, I think the Labour Party are making a huge mistake. Because, effectively, they've got the millstone of, of Wales round their neck, the Welsh NHS. And, you know, any comment that's made, Sturgeon can turn around and say, oh yeah, right, but we're doing better than Mm -hmm. You did when you were in government, and your present uh, government in Wales. You know, so uh, it actually really, 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 really bugs me, because we need a long-term strategy for the NHS, and it needs to be agreed by any possible Scottish government. They need to sit down and actually work it out together. I agree with you. I think it's it's a well, big, we, it well, is a big challenge facing the NHS across the, the uh, Britain. It's a, it's a, we're challenged because of the the increasing life expectancy. Well, not it's, and it's the not even just treatments. It's not even just that. It's we we need councils with the uh, social work departments hand in hand with the NHS. I mean, I've got personal experience of my mother having to sit in hospital for a week because they couldn't put a team together to deal with it. Now, um, there was, uh, interestingly, there was something on um, 2015 last night, the BBC, with Brown's door, saying, there was a woman on there saying, you know, volunteers go in, help feed your mum and dad, da da da. Yeah, I, I think that's a great idea. But even with the health experience that my own family's got, they weren't prepared to release my mother into our care. So something has to be done about that, because that was a bed taken up for seven days unnecessarily. Um, I couldn't agree with you there with the volunteers. Um, not volunteering, because you've got volunteers, you know what you've got. I mean, you, you, well, I, I just, that is cheap. That it, well, it's cheap, and it also could be dangerous. Well, I, in some I see with vulnerable what, people. What the woman was talking about was people going in and helping their relatives wash. Oh, your relatives and meals, you know, I mean, my experience of the NHS has been absolutely brilliant with both my mother and father, um, let alone my own very rare occasions when I've used it. And there's never been an issue with dehydration or anything like that. Um, in fact, I've never seen, didn't realise that they had professional tea people in the hospitals going around with tea trolleys every half hour or hour or whatever it is. I mean, it, I, I can see very little wrong with it. Having said that, neither of my parents have had to go in for a hip operation or my dad got his cataracts done, they got them done very quickly, it's hardly life-threatening. You know, it's all been good from my point of view and that appears to be the point of view of the vast majority of people in Scotland. And what the Labour Party is doing at the moment is undermining the general population's view with tales that are possibly accurate in the individual case, but not accurate as a picture of the whole end. You mean Project Fear again? That's all it is. Well, it's the same as well, Project Fear. Well, and then you ask the question, yeah. why if it's such a mess, was it not a mess up until the 18th of September last year? I mean, it is weaponising the NHS. And if you do that, you cannot solve the problems long term. You have to sit down. You have to say, right, this is what we're going to do. This is a plan we're all agreed on. Because it's not going to take one parliament. It's going to take three. Well, it actually takes, I think, the health service. It's, it's ongoing. I mean, when you say this, there's always stress on a health service because it's always an ongoing with new drugs, 
we make, and again, as you say, making people better. Then all you need is a really bad winter. You have umpteen people over this but country I, this no, winter I, can't have not, any heating and all the rest. It's not even that. It's if you want a great NHS, mm -hmm. everybody has to agree what that looks like, and everybody has to work towards it. Not criticising. I mean, I have no idea why they failed their targets, but I'll tell you what. I don't believe the Labour Party. No. I'll tell you why the Because reason... they have weaponised it and yeah. it's all about politics. I don't want to hear that. I want to hear the truth. I want to hear solutions that work because I might end up there in the not too distant oh. future. But you've got, there's, there's without a doubt, more money going into <coughs> for this government into the NHS. The last, uh, La La Labour did say they wouldn't prioritise it. Um, and one of the reasons it's crippled. Um, and even when they're plowing this money in, is the amount of money that all these health boards, like particularly NHS with the new Royal Infirmary and that, are plowing into the coffers of the private sector from the Gordon PFI, Brands, the, the PFI, pure financial which incompetence. Was, which was a it's labor millions list. and millions and millions. That cost about 160 million quid to build. The private sector will get over a billion pounds back. That's a pretty good return. Oh well, you may as well invest in a hospital instead of a block of flats and getting the rents from that. You'd be better off. I the think the worst thing there, what what, what was doing, what Kezia was doing, was uh, maybe a lot of people really. It's terrifying people. I mean, it and it's it's not true. And it's not a way to resolve the issue. No. that's really my thing. Well, I'm tempted to stick to the NHS, but I think I'll just. Uh, reference um, Ruth, uh, Ruth Davidson, the Tory. She um, asked about land reform and which I said at the time, was, well at least she is speaking up for her constituency, yeah. in other words the, the estate owners. But uh, the shocking thing that she tried to suggest was breaking up family farms. Well, well, wait a minute. Uh, um, excuse me, well breaking up farms and uh, didn't have farms for that big. I thought the land reform will, will, with a bit of luck, break up these giant estates of 20,000 acres plus. Uh, farms are not bigger. The you know, typical farm in Scotland is are very rarely bigger than uh, two or three hundred acres, let alone more than a thousand acres. So <laughs> I can't see. Well, but, but she had a point about it's food. scaremongering. But she had a point about food because they do know that by 2030, this country will be having to import most of it's food. At the moment, it's importing huge amounts of food. Just bought a bit of supermarket and that's where it all came from. Uh, it's nearly all important. That's huge effect, amount. But that's the impact of having open I'm markets. Sorry, I'm sorry. Grow, grow the food yeah, where it's cheap markets. to grow it. Yeah, well, yeah. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't think you're right about that. Do you want to subsidise the growing of food in this country? They say by 2030 we will, like we they will used be to. Are you importing. talking about the UK? The UK, yeah. Oh, UK, not just... <laughs> But because uh, I think I think Scotland actually produces more. I think it is a net exporter. Of yeah, because it's one of its um, prime, um, well, money-making efforts. I mean, with food and all, all, all the rest of it. I might be wrong, but I, but I do know. Have it in my head. But on a UK basis, by 2030, we will be importing the majority. But as I say, and I think you're, you're wrong. But you're, no, let me look. The, 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 when 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 we were small, our, uh, and before we even joined the EU, the common market back then. Uh, all the farmers were subsidised. It was a legacy of the war yeah. and the shortage of food and having to be imported. Mm -hmm. So they, there really was a push following World War II to make sure as much food as possible was grown in this country. So our food was subsidised. Hmm. It's cheaper to grow tomatoes in Spain than it is in Scotland. Well, make no bones about it. Because it's got sunshine. The, well, actually, the there was a there's an area in Glasgow that used to produce ah. basically all of Scotland's tomatoes. I see that there was a. I mean, You're talking about the, the Clyde right. Valley. Yeah. Well, yeah. there was an attempt to restart it that hasn't worked out. See if we did something daft. Can I just throw something in daft? You talk about tomatoes, but and you said that great somewhere in Glasgow, right? Take Clyde Europe Valley. as a whole. Yeah. Which country grows the most bananas? Iceland. Well, they've, have they've got, they've got very cheap in, energy. Yeah, because in the in the in the craters. So which you country, up to Iceland. Which country uh, in Europe grows the most um, <laughs> broccoli? No idea. Scotland. Scotland. Oh yeah. You wouldn't Scotland. believe it. Brussels. Brussels. Broccoli. Spreads. Brussels spreads. Broccoli and Brussels. No, and Brussels. 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 no I mean, if Fife. You want to go <laughs> drive through Fife in mid from midsummer on? You think it was covered in water? It's actually plastic, yeah. covering all the fields.
the enormous fields of uh, vegetables and these enormous machines. Anyway, we've got quite a bit from. <laughs> yeah, got... Well, to go back to your point about it not affecting farms, I'm sorry. Uh -huh. The change in the law that basically says the eldest son does no longer inherits land mm. could have an effect. It might, at the moment, it's unforeseen. But if you have two sons mm. who both want to farm the land, daughters as well, mate. You could end up well. Daughters as well, but you the, the end up with all the land it, fragmented. Yeah, well, that's yeah. an old, that's historical that idea. Well, it, in Scotland, it never it, happened because the law said the eldest yeah, yeah, yeah. It applies specifically but to the, land. The land reform sure. is in, in, in the countryside is aimed at these enormous estates owned by billionaires abroad. I, I mean, it, not at family. I farms. mean, I need to actually see the legislation before mm. because there is, I'm sorry, I don't care what anybody says. I mean, the people I know who most of them rent off the Duke of Buccleuch the farm would love to own their own land. And if that's what's going to happen, great. The Lib Dems come in, they didn't have Willie Rennie. I don't know whether it was a question of um, Willie Rennie didn't get his once every three weeks, he doesn't get a question, but they, they gave one to another. He was standing Dem. in a corner with a dance cap on. Alison McInnes, and uh, she brought up the, 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 the usual, basically, the, the Lib Dems are always attacking uh, Police Scotland. And so the issue, <laughs> it's true, isn't it? <laughs> I think they've got, I mean, personally, um, he should go. There's no two ways about that. After what he did here in Edinburgh, the way he's actually Who? undermined in house, he should go. Who? Uh, oh, house. house. Yeah, I agree with you. I'm sorry, what is it with you people? What? The, this is a new enterprise. When did Police Scotland start? Oh, I know. But the first thing oh, he does is steam no, 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 it away. No, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's one of the problems with politics today. Nobody gets time to do anything. Everything's supposed to start. Perfect. Yeah, but not no, all, no, all, he no, did, all he no. did was export everything Strathclyde he, was doing he into the rest of Scotland. He's, and he's, and he's the sovereign now. And policing and should strong. be, policing should should be no, by no, consent. No. Wait a minute, guys. What we should do is fire him and bring in somebody new. No. Who will then stamp whatever his version of policing is on the police. Okay, Scotland. well, the problem really We will bring is, another set of problems. All right, if you're aware, think of the history. The problem is that there was a. Stushy, a, a rammy between the, the police authority and Stephen House before they even got established. And Stephen House was determined that he wouldn't be accountable to anybody. No. What Stephen House wanted was exactly the same system that worked up until that point. When you were on the council, you didn't get to tell the chief constable no. how to run Lothian and Borders. No. They wanted to tell the chief constable how to run Scotland. No, but well, I'm sorry. I but know, the police in Lothian and Borders knew what was happening in Lothian and Borders. They know all the different peculiarities because, sorry, over here, this is a different country to the west side. A totally different country. Yeah, and yeah. you get this Strathclyde and men because it was borders, in the net as well. And in the borders, they complained continually about being part of the Edinburgh cell. It was Lothian and Borders. Hmm. It's not going to matter how big or small your police authority is, there are going to be places that believe they should be treated differently. But personally, I so, would say he's not fit for the purpose. So your country. argument is in fact that the law should be applied differently in different areas of Scotland. No, well, kind of, I'll come back, no. to, I'll come back no. to the... the, the, the Policing is by consensus. They are peacekeepers no, no, I'm sorry. in this country. I'm sorry, your argument... He's broken the consensus. Your argument is quite simple. That House should either police like they did in Edinburgh, because you preferred that, no, they police in Edinburgh oh, like they have policed in Edinburgh. We have policed <coughs> in it, um, and through and it's taken decades. The whole thing works. Uh, you can see it in Glasgow quite often when they're all out and about worked, uh, chewing on pavements. That it doesn't uh, work. It worked for Edinburgh. Yeah, it worked for Edinburgh. Work for Gala Shields. No, but it works in Edinburgh. So, so the, argue, in the Edinburgh. argument you're making is based on the fact that policing should be applied differently. Depending on the area you're in. Okay then. No, right because then. no, because they're not breaking any specific law. Um, in what Edinburgh did, the whole point is he came in here, this is marker, and he did. He's not fit for purpose. He should be out the door. He might be the chief constable of Scotland, but they should all have an input. Phil, we don't want a dictator. Phil, Phil you better watch out. There could be a knock on your door tonight. Well, oh, sorry. Have you seen him with his speedos and all that? The I mean, argument. Argue. Well, I'm sorry. All right, guys. All right. Well, I'm sorry. Bloody fascists. Let's, let's, let's come sorry. back. Let's come it's back. It's also it. 
incredibly practical. Okay, well, let's come I've back. fought fires in the car. Oh, right, 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 yeah, right. We're not talking uh-huh. about the fire service. Let's come back to let's come back to what we're supposedly sitting down here to talk conflict. about. Uh, Jenny Mara, who always <laughs> seems to get a question, Politician. who's their health spokesperson, because oh. uh, big bomber Bailey, I don't know who's, what she speaks for these days, but Jenny Mara Finance, isn't she? Anyway, Jenny Mara is easy on the eye and is good enough, she'll always stick the, the, the dagger in. So this week it was, uh, she continued with uh, the health service, Labour, and it was mental health. Um, I'm not sure she made any progress with that. Um, she attacked the. She took just her local uh, Tayside Health Service uh, record on mental health, uh, and she came up with a figure which I'm not even going to quote. It's forty-two percent that weren't. But then again, it was uh, whack because we're the only country apparently in the world that any even bothers to um, worry about the kids and put a target on. Look, them. generally speaking, when it comes to mental health, a GP oh. does not refer uh, oh. a, somebody to a consultant, a human being for treatment straight away, unless it's a crisis, mm. because it's very expensive. They dish out Prozac or similar. That's yeah. the, Come on, that's the, just the yeah, way it I is. Why the corner? Yeah. It's the way it is. It's not, they're not gonna, I mean, if you want to see a consultant on the National Health Service for something that is not uh, a crisis situation, well, you're going to have to wait months, because they mm. are very expensive to see a, a, a consultant, just because well, you're having a bit of an anxiety attack. I mean, the mistake Jenny Mara made for me was to go her, well, where was she? Tayside, Tayside. Dundee. So Nicola could turn around and say, well, actually, in January, we introduced yeah. nine more staff. <coughs> Do you not um, get the, so we're yeah. solving it. Do you not get the impression, I mean, again, from it, and the kinds of questions, that, I mean, it's just panic stations. I mean, they're all, they're, they're not even conferring with each other, because somebody has an idea, just spouts it out, and it gives Nicola that, she just stands there looking so statesman, right? Um, and without losing a head or anything, just completely. But, but I mean, oh, it's yeah. uh, the one. The only other topic that, that, yes, of, of, of relevance I think that came up was um, education and the question of attainment. And I was a little concerned myself at the. I don't know uh, who brought it up. It was Elaine Murray, I think, brought it up. Oh. The, the question of attainment in education, and it would appear that no, it was Ian Gray. So it would appear. Although, no, we, we no it was Elaine, Elaine Murray brought it up first. Yeah, Elaine Murray brought it up, and it was a kind of follow up like this. Yeah. Um, I, I was interested in two points there. Um, Nicola Sturgeon, she did say that the Scottish system was moving to that um, anybody who wanted to be a head teacher would have to have a master's degree, not, not, a, not, a, just not a bachelor's degree, which is good, um, I would say. It could be an extra. Slightly cleverer than the rest well, of the... Well, it depends on the content of the degree. That's <laughs> obviously fair enough. Uh, Ian Gray brought up this question of attainment advisors. And now, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a bit concerned about that. It was a, it's as if the, uh, the government is sending out Gestapo people to tell the local authorities exactly how to run their education systems. And I'm sorry, I follow... Um, I, I really, I think we need to be... <laughs> Sorry, I don't like this complete centralisation of government in Edinburgh. So you, you're essentially a Tory then? No, not at all. I'm following Leslie Riddick's idea, the kind of Nordic idea where you, oh, no. probably, you, you really have Sorry. much smaller no, local authorities. That's essentially what Gove wants. He wants the schools to run themselves. Oh, no, no, not schools. No, 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 not no, to no. run themselves, but to be run by the local authority. They yeah, have much yeah, smaller local authorities. authorities. So yeah. you want local authorities to be the dictator? as opposed to the government. No, you have a national curriculum, but it is run by local oh, nothing, accountable councils. Nothing, and they're answerable to, to the local them. people, and they have a different... It's nothing to do with your national curriculum. It's a bit... It's to do with your standard it, of but it, it, no, yes. it, it's a bit like my complaint about uh, the centralisation of police across the country. It's like, uh, you know, they police, they've got to police by consent. Do you know something about this? The, they're talking about the police, there's a policeman walking by. Um, do you know something I found interesting when I discovered about it was that the, the Communist Party in France were all in favour of national service. And why? Because then the army, the forces, the armed forces would represent the people, not an elite select few that elected to be professional soldiers. I, I don't get this. I mean, I, 
Localism is great. The problem is who then takes responsibility? Now, we've seen it. Now, I mean, Nicola announced today that all 32 councils in Scotland have accepted their teacher numbers, teacher numbers um, to get part of the 51 million. Now, she stands up there week in, week out, takes criticism. Now, if she's going to be held responsible, she has to have input. Hmm. The government has to. That have is, of course, the issue. I agree with you. Now you well, that's why it, it, at the moment local councils can decide on the level of classroom sizes up to mm. the cap that the government puts on it. Now, how much do you? How much control do you give to local councils? Um, you can't give them all the control because I'll tell you now what will happen. It's now, no, 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 Glas no. Glasgow. <laughs> as long as it's Labour, will do what it can to politicise education so they can go back to the Scottish Government and say, oh, our class sizes are all full. No, it, or, it, I think, it, I think, think we're talking, no, I think we're talking across purposes here. Um, in a, I totally agree with you. Um, they set the standards. When you talk about attainment, that's fine. That's just core cool work. So you have a board that goes round and checks standards and all the rest of it. The councils run the schools, but the standards are set by the government. I mean, if I was looking at I'd go to Finland. Uh, where Finland, which has apparently the best education system on the planet, it's run by local authorities, yeah. um, and in places like Finland, most of that you have lots of smaller authorities, it's broken down, but they have national standards, um, and in 40 years, they've yeah, transformed their, they education, transform system. their education system look, and the health system. I've got a little bit of personal input here. Uh, you know, the, the, the place I grew up up north, uh, and my father... Uh, was what was called Borough Severe, which was the uh, local authority manager. He, he ran the town, mm. which was a population of only 4,000. The education department was for the county, and the county had a population of only 50,000. Now, uh, an authority of only 50,000 is comparable with, say, the Western Isles, well, it's even slightly bigger than the Western Isles, the Orkney Islands, or the Shetland Islands. Nobody says that either of these three authorities have a bad record on running education or whatever else they run. No, but you, you're not you're not comparing light with light. In a community of that size, you can go around and kick a councillor's door in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, it's that simple. You can find them. And if they're failing your children, you can get a hurry them. Try that in Glasgow. No. Fair Try enough. Try it in Edinburgh. Hey, look guys, I'm not even gonna, not even gonna bother scoring no, today. Not. I think we've we've talked we've had quite a very uh, an unusual, should we say it's not really been a review, we've had a bit of a, a wee rammy, a wee opinion piece, we've all had our little say, and uh, I'd like to say thank you very much for a, a very revealing conversation. Uh, it's even, it's nearly as good as what we have in the pub. Yeah, that's what it should be. And if you're still here and listening to what I'm saying here now, well done for sticking the course, and uh, perhaps we might be back next week.